In the first part of this knit along, we cast on stitches and shape the toe part of the sock. Then we spend some time making the foot part of the sock. It was our homework, remember? And now the sock is all ready for the heel shaping. The heel of sneaker socks has a slightly unusual construction, so some instructions might feel different than the instructions we normally see in a sock pattern. Please don't let this fact discourage you. The shaping is not complicated, as long as we carefully follow steps 5 and 6 of the pattern. Before we get to shaping the heel, let's take a look at the sock. Uh, last time we stopped about over here. Remember, we shaped the toe part and then we did the four seam. And then I spent time doing my homework, working on the foot part of the sock. As you see, uh, part of it is done in plain stocking and stitch, that where we knit um, all stitches in each round. And then I worked in the one by one ribbing and the plain stocking and stitch again. And it looks the same on the wrong side, on the back of the foot. Basically, it's not the wrong side of the work, in fact, uh, except for the four seam. So the look is the same. And if you look closely, you will um, understand that the, uh, this section done in one by one ribbing, it creates shaping. Even though we didn't decrease or increase stitches, we still uh, made the shaping and it uh, happens in the same part where the human foot normally gets uh, thinner. So you know that part between the toes and the heel that where our foot gets thinner, that's where the shaping is and it provides a better fit of the sock and it adds up to the fact that these socks do not slip off the feet. So that's a good thing, right? And now we're gonna work on the main reason why the, the socks do not slip off the feet and that reason is the construction of the heel. Uh, to shape the heel of the sock, we'll use short rows and we'll do the whole shaping process in three stages. First, we'll make the bottom part of the sock, of the heel. We're going to work only on the second group of stitches. So this one is going to be, the, the top part of the sock is going to be uh, just idle, you know, it's going to be on vacation, let's say. And we'll be working only on this half of the stitches. So we'll make the bottom of the heel and because um, the human foot is more rounded than just a plain 90 degree angle right we'll add additional short rows here to accommodate for the curve and to make sure that the uh, the uh, sock fits well without relying too much on the stretch of the fabric so that's going to be the bottom part and then we'll work on the top part of the heel the the part that covers the back of the foot basically right uh, that part is easy and quite straightforward. There are no complications there, no additional short rows or anything. And then we'll move to the pretty much the main part, I would say, of the shaping because it is the part that makes the shaping very different from the usual shaping of the um, uh, knitted sock. And that part is responsible for raising the heel. So we're going to add more short rows again. Uh, to make sure that the heel gets kind of hugged by the sock. So now that we know the procedure, the process, let's get started. So the first part of the, of the shaping would be the one where we make the, uh, the bottom of the heel. And we will start with the, uh, the first short row and that's going to be the setup short row one as it is explained uh, explained in step five of the pattern so what's going to happen in the, what's going to happen in this row in this row we're going to knit all stitches in the round until we get to the very last stitch until we get to this guy so that this round is kind of easy even though it is the setup short row one but uh, for now we just knit stitch by stitch every stitch in this round but we stop when we get to the last stitch okay just one more stitch and see i have one stitch left before the end of the round but i stop here because we're not gonna just knit the stitch we're gonna make a wrap and turn so we're gonna wrap the stitch to prevent the hole from appearing because we're going to turn the work and if we just turn without wrapping then we'll have a hole right here and because we're going to do it 
basically often <laughs> while we shape the heel, then we're going to end up with a set of holes. So uh, to fix that, there is a very simple thing that we can do. We can make a wrap and we'll use a shadow wrap technique because it I like it and it provides, I find, a, a very neat look. So how it works. Uh, before uh, turning the work, insert the tip of the right needle under the strand that is at the bottom of the live stitch on the left needle. So it is basically the head of the stitch that is below the stitch, the, the live stitch on the left needle. So you can go either under the strand like this, so that's a, um, a good way to do it, or if you feel that it is too complicated to find that strand, then you can also go into the stitch below, see, see, just like this. So it's totally up to you. It's not gonna affect the look of the sock in any major way, so just choose whatever is simpler for you in a certain situation. So I will pick the strand and then wrap it with the yarn and pull it through. And see, that's not probably a good idea because I split the yarn. So I would just go into the stitch this time to show you that it's totally okay and there is no knitting police, you know, to tell you that it's not working because it is, because we need to create a wrap. So we made that wrap. Now we place it on the left needle like this, and then we can confidently turn the work. So this was our setup short row one. And now we're going to work on this setup short row two. And this row will be uh, purling all stitches up until we come to the, uh, to the last stitch of the first half of the stitches. So if you're working on double pointed needles and your stitches are split here, like between four needles, for example, then keep in mind that we are working not to the end of the needle in your case, uh, but we're working to the last stitch uh, of the first half of the stitches. So we're going to work until we get here and we're going to purl every stitch up to that point. So I will simply purl stitch by stitch, but I will stop when I get to the last stitch of this half of stitches. And here's the last stitch to be purled. And then we are at the end of this half of the stitches. So I am at the last stitch of this half of the stitches. And now again, we make a shadow wrap. That means we bring the yarn to the front and then we go into the stitch below, wrap it with the yarn and then pull it. See, it doesn't want to pull through. And then pull it through, creating that wrap. Place the wrap on the left needle like this. And we created a wrapped stitch. That's what is called the wrapped stitch, a stitch that has two strands, one live stitch and one strand that is actually a wrap that we just made. And then we turn the work. So that was the setup short row two. Now we set up the work and that means that now we have one wrapped stitch at each side of this half of the stitches, at each side of the stitches that we're going to use to make the heel. And now we can actually uh, start working the main short row. So the first main short row uh, will be knitting all stitches until we get to one stitch before the previous wrap and turn, before the previous wrapped stitch. So it's easy, it's fairly easy to see those wrapped stitches because they are thick, they are big guys, they, because they have two strands in there. So we're going to knit all stitches until we get over here. Why? Because see we have this wrapped stitch and then one stitch in front of it. So that's where we're going to stop. Okay, so that is our main short row one. So we knit all stitches until we get to one stitch before the previous wrap and turn, before we see that big guy, the wrapped stitch. And one more stitch. Okay, here we go. Here we are. This is the wrap stitch. This is one slim stitch, let's say the regular stitch, right in front of that wrapped stitch, and that's where we stop. So we 
came here and now we're gonna make another wrap and turn another shadow wrap so we pick the uh, the yarn through the either the strand um, that belongs to the stitch below or just go inside that stitch below as we discussed before and place this wrap on the needle now we have two uh, wrapped stitches at this side of the work so turn the work and uh, we get to the main short row two and that's basically the same thing as the main short row one except that we're gonna purl all stitches because obviously it is a purl row so we're gonna purl all stitches until we get to one stitch before the wrap stitch until we get over here so here's the wrap stitch the thick one and here's the normal stitch the slim one and then when we get here we're gonna stop and make another wrap but until then we simply purl every stitch and here we are so again i purl those stitches and here's the wrap stitch and here's the uh lie the the normal stitch the skinny one and i stop here and now i'm gonna make another shadow wrap so i go into the stitch wrap it with the yarn pull it through then place this wrap on the left needle created creating another uh, thick stitch another wrap stitch and now i can turn the work knowing that i won't have any holes over here because we created this wrap so at this point we have two wrapped stitches at each side of the work so uh, two stitches over here and then if we look at this side of the work there are two stitches over here and you can fairly easily recognize them because they are thicker than the regular stitches that's very important because these stitches it's important to recognize these stitches because they're going to be our mark that tells us where to make wraps and uh, continue shaping Remember I told you earlier about the uh, additional short rows that we're going to add to the work to make sure the bottom of the heel uh, has a good fit, that it, um, it kind of mimics the curve of the heel itself. And so now is the time to make those additional rows. And the first additional row uh, will be knitting to two stitches before the previous wrap and turn. So this time, instead of stopping see this is our um, these are our two stitches that uh, two wrapped stitches the thick guys over here right and uh, when we were working the main rows uh, the main short rows just now we stopped uh, one stitch before so we would stop over here but for additional uh, short rows we would stop two stitches uh, before for additional short row one we would stop when we uh, when we are at this spot when we are two stitches before the last wrap and turn which would be this stitch the, this wrap stitch okay so i'm gonna knit all stitches until i get to that point that is two stitches uh, before the previous wrapped stitch the previous wrap and turn okay just one more stitch and here we are so here's what we have. We have two wrapped stitches over here, and then we, we have two uh, skinny stitches over here. And that's where we stop and we make another wrap. So we, again, it's a shadow wrap. We go either under the, uh, the strand at the back or we go into the stitch. It's up to you. As I, like I said, it's not gonna make really any major difference. Just try not to split the yarn like I keep doing over here. So I make the wrap and then you place it on the needle and that's what we have. We have two wrapped stitches, we have one skinny stitch and we have two wrapped stitches and we have one wrapped stitch again. So that's the situation that you're gonna have after the additional short row one. Now you turn the work and we do the same thing just uh, with purling, okay? We stop again uh, two stitches before the previous wrap and turn and that's going to be over here see these two thick stitches and then we leave two skinny stitches uh, in front of them and that's where we're going to stop and that's going to be our additional short row two in this row we're going to purl all stitches until we get to that point that is two stitches before the previous wrap and turn the previous wrapped stitch 
And here we are. So I have two uh, wrapped stitches over here and two skinny stitches and that's when I stop and make another shadow wrap. So I just make the wrap, place it on the left needle and then turn the work. Again, at this, this side we have the same situation. We have two wrapped stitches, then one skinny stitch and then one wrapped stitch again. And that's how uh, it should look after additional short row Two. Now the additional short row three, it's basically the same thing as the main short row but with the only difference that we're gonna knit this additional wrap and we're gonna make a wrap and turn over here where it is supposed to be. So we knit all stitches until we get to the previous wrap and turn, the additional one, the one that we created in the previous uh, knit row that was the additional short row one as it is called in the pattern. So we get to that stitch and then we uh, knit it with the wrap together and then we make another shadow wrap and turn the work. And that's gonna happen pretty soon. Just one more stitch. Okay, here we are. So that's the, uh, the thick stitch. You can, you can see it. I mean, it's quite easy to, to see it because it is so it is twice as big as the normal stitch. So when you get to this stitch, knit it together with the wrap, just like this. And then we have one skinny stitch left before the previous, the other shadow wrap, the other wrap stitch, and we're going to make wrap and turn again. So we're going to make a wrap to add to this stitch and then we're going to turn the work. See now we have three wrapped stitches in a sequence. We don't have any skinny stitches between them anymore, right? So we turn the work and that was our additional short row three. In the last additional short row, short row four, we're going to uh, purl all stitches and then we're going to purl that additional wrap over here and then we're going to make a wrap in this stitch, the, the, the last, uh, the lost skinny one, let's say it's got the one that got lost between those thick stitches. So we're going to purl to that um, spot and then we'll do all these little maneuvers. And it seems that we're here. Right, so here's the thick stitch. I'm going to just purl it together with the wrap. And then we come to that lost skinny stitch and we make a shadow wrap and add it to the stitch, just like this. So again, we have three stitches in a, in a row, three uh, wrapped stitches in a row, and now we can turn the work. So we are done with this, uh, the additional short rows for now. But we're gonna repeat this sequence. We're gonna repeat, uh, we're gonna work four main rows, so main short row one, main short row two, and then again main short row one, main short row two, and then we're going to work these four additional short rows. And we do it until uh, we get a certain number of wrapped stitches at each side of the work. So right now we have three, but for different sizes you would need six to ten stitches depending on the size you're making. So keep, uh, keep an eye on these stitches and uh, continue making the uh, four main, row, main short rows and four additional short rows and then again four main short rows. Again, depending on the size you're making, you're going to uh, work this, uh, uh, the, the sequence, the main, four main short rows, four additional short rows, two or three times. Uh, but it depends on, you know, like I said, it depends on the size you're making. And this is my last row of this part of the shaping. Uh, how do I know that? I've been counting these um, wrapped stitches over here and I know that I'm going to finish with the purl rows. So it is either uh, main short row 2 or it is the additional short row 4 that is the case for me. So I'm going to work to that double wrapped stitch which is over here, the wrapped stitch. And then I will make the wrap and turn and uh, turn the work. And here we go. So when we look at the work right now, we see that it is getting, um, the, the, the heel is getting that 
triangular shape and that's exactly what we uh, what we've been working uh, on and uh, then we see that we have more wrapped stitches at each side of the work like I said depending on the size you're making you're gonna have either um, or six to ten of those wrapped stitches and these are the marks you know so you count those stitches and you know where to stop and you know that you're gonna finish with the pro row now this part of the shaping is done and uh, we can uh, move on to the next part of the shaping and working on the top part of the heel as it is instructed in uh, step 5.2 of the pattern. Uh, the second part of the shaping is easier. There won't be any additional rows so we are not supposed to be uh, remembering you know what kind of row we are working. Um, there are just two short rows and um, here's how we're gonna work them. So we'll start with the short row 1A. I added this A you know to distinguish this row from the uh, from the main short row 1 and 2 that we had we worked in the first part of the shaping. So the short row 1A would be uh, two needle stitches to the closest wrap and turn to the closest wrapped stitch that's gonna be over here for me. And then we knit the wrapped stitch with the wrap together as one stitch. And then we make another wrap and that's going to be the double wrap. So that's going to be another interesting thing. Uh, but it's not complicated at all. So we knit all stitches until we get to the, uh, the first, uh, I mean the, the previous um, wrap and turn, the stitch that we created. Uh, when we did the wrap and turn the previous time and that's going to be right over here so I get to my first wrap and turn from this side of the work and then you knit these two uh, strands together so it's a stitch plus wrap we knit them together and then we create another wrap so we do it the same thing either go under this strand over here at the back or you go into the stitch that is below the live stitch that is already wrapped. So we do it either way, it doesn't really matter. And then you place this wrap on the need on the left needle again. So now we have the stitch that has two wraps. So we have three strands in the same spot and that's the stitch with the double wrap. And then we turn the work. This is the uh, short row 1A. The short row one, uh, the short row two A would be exactly the same thing, but uh, on the pro side. So we pro all stitches until we get to the um, to the previous wrap uh, wrapped stitch, the stitch that we created during the previous wrap and turn, and that's going to be pretty soon. Where is it? Just two more stitches. Okay, so here it is, the big, the first big guy in this line of big guys. And then we purl it together with the wrap as one stitch and then we create additional wrap for the next stitch. Even though it is already wrapped, we're gonna add a third strand here, like this. See, now this is a super thick guy. <laughs> and then you turn the work and we repeat the same thing. So we work to the previous uh, wrapped stitch and this time it's gonna be a stitch with a double wrap and the tricky part about this stitch is that it is thick and when we are to work to knit it to knit all these strands together uh, especially if we're working with the fine yarn as we do now it could be a bit tricky and uh, simply to insert the needle see it could be quite challenging to go in there it is possible it is possible but could be tricky and if you find it is uh, it is difficult then you um, you can knit all these wraps through the back loop and that's what I prefer to do you know it does change slightly the look of the stitch of course because when we are knitting through the back loop it kind of twists the stitch but no one is ever going to notice that and if we have to really struggle you know to knit it the way that we should knit it um, I choose the easy way, right? So I choose to knit it through the back loop. Uh, if you want to knit it the regular way, then of course it, it would be a much better, uh, a much, um, 
how to say it even not even better but the correct way to do it right but we could cheat a bit i think it's not a big deal really in this case it's not a, a big deal at all so i knit these uh three wraps together and then i create another wrap for the next stitch and then we turn the work and we do the same thing uh, purling three uh, wraps together, three strands together is not a big issue at all because we insert the needle from right to left so it's not usually uh, complicated, it's not hard but knitting could cause some issues but like I said uh, if you struggle with uh, working that thick stitch then simply uh, knit, uh, knit it through the back loop and that's not a big deal okay so I'm almost here three strands you see my first um, wrapped stitch and then I purl all these strands together and then I create an extra wrap for the next stitch and that's basically that's all so we just keep repeating these two rows until there is only one wrapped stitch left at the right side of the work until we have just one stitch here and this time we will finish with a knit row and in that last knit row we won't make a wrap and turn um, at the end of the row but until we get there simply repeat these short row 1a and short row 2a the knit row and the pro row until you have just one wrap stitch over here and you finish remember to finish with the knit row and don't wrap and turn at the end of that row okay and this is my last uh, short row uh, it's a knit row and uh, how i know that it is the last row because i have just one big stitch at this side of the work so i'm gonna knit it and i'll knit it through the back loop because I want it easier, the easier way. And now here's what we have. Uh, we have just one stay, one big stitch, one wrap stitch over here at this, at the right side of the work left. And we finish this knit row. We don't do any more wraps and turns and we continue working in the round. So this next round would be actually working in the round. So we re, uh, rearrange the, the needles and we're gonna knit all stitches and in this round we're gonna get rid of this thick guy of the big guy we're gonna uh, knit it together with all the wraps so we simply knit all stitches in the round isn't it refreshing eh? after working back and forth and with the short rows after all those wraps it feels so good to simply knit all stitches in the round okay so i finished knitting all stitches of the first half of the stitches and then i rearranged the needles and i see this big guy right here at the beginning of the uh, of the work of this uh, half of the stitches and i simply knit it together with all the wraps you can do it through the front loop as, as i do right now or the back loop doesn't matter like i said it is not that big of an issue at all so we we're gonna knit to the end of this round and then we'll uh, stop for a moment and take a look at the work and pat ourselves on the back because so far we did a great job shaping the heel and the last stitch of the round the plain round where we simply knit all stitches so let's take a look at the work here's the heel see we finished two two stages of shaping the heel so we did the uh, the bottom of the heel over here and we added um, additional short rows as you well remember <laughs> it's hard to forget right and these additional short rows here's the result you see this uh, the shaping it kind of curves it's not really 90 degrees as it usually is in socks it kind of gives a more curve to the um, to the heel and that curve is very close to the curve that we have on our heels so the the regular human heel right it's not simply a 90 degrees angle 
So that's the value of these uh, short rows, the additional short rows that we did, even though it wasn't easy, but we did well. And then uh, we shaped the back of the heel and now we're gonna move on to the third part of the shaping. And this part is gonna involve most of the stitches that we have on the needle. So we're not gonna do it only on this half of the stitches. We're gonna also add the stitches that are um, at the, that belong, so to say, to the front, to the top part of the sock. And because of that, it is not possible to work this shaping when if you make two socks at a time. So if you decided to use um, a magic loop technique or two short circular needles and make two of these socks at the same time, which is a smart decision, but um, at this point you would have to transfer one of the socks uh, to um, spare double pointed needles or a circular needle or something because the this part of the shaping cannot be done um, when we um, work two socks at a time because like I said we're gonna involve most of the stitches that we have on the needles so uh, what's gonna happen in this part of the shaping basically we're gonna add we're gonna raise the heel we're gonna add more rounds over here uh, so that we have enough fabric to kind of hug the heel of the foot. And um, that happens again by using the short rows, the ones that we know all too well by now. And um, to make that shaping, because it's different for every size, I mean, the, uh, the process is the same and we're going to work through that, but the numbers are all different. And uh, you need to be really careful about the numbers and you need to be really careful about uh, making the shaping. So it's not something you're going to do while you're watching TV. So set aside time, you know, to really be focused and to count the rows. It's not long. There are going to be just a few, a few rounds, a few short rows, but uh, it would require your full attention. So here's how it happens. Uh, first, we'll work the setup rows. The setup short row 1A uh, tells us to knit to the last few stitches of the round. And that means that we're going to knit these stitches and then go all the way over here. And then we're going to stop when we have, uh, you know, a few stitches. And those, the numbers are different for all sizes, like I said. So for my size, it's going to be seven stitches. So I'm going to, st where, where are seven stitches too? four, six, seven. So I'm going to stop over here, but until that time, I'm going to simply knit all stitches in this round. Okay, let's see how many stitches I have here. Two, four, six, seven. Okay, two more stitches for me uh, to knit, but um, like I said, if you're making socks in different size, then your number will be different. Uh, okay, two, four, six, seven. So I stop here and then I make a wrap. So again, the same shadow wrap or use any other wrapping technique if you if you like something else, just a regular wrap and turn, it's totally up to you. So I make a wrap, I place it on the needle and then I turn the work. So that was the setup short row 1A as it is described in step six of the pattern. Now we're going to work the setup short row 2A and that's going to be the purling row. And in this row, we're going to purl a certain number of stitches. And again, it's different for all sizes. Uh, so in my case, it's uh, 15. So I'm going to purl 15 stitches and then I'm going to stop and make another wrap and turn the work. So let's see. Probably a few more stitches and I'm going to count and see how many stitches I have on the needle. So these stitches are going to be, uh, you start counting from uh, the, this big uh, wrapped stitch. See, so you don't count this stitch and then you just count the stitches, uh, the skinny stitches that come after, after that wrap. Uh, so it's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 2, 4, 15. Perfect. So I stopped just in time. And now we make another wrap and turn the work. So these are the setup short rows. 
And again, we have one wrap stitch at each side of the work, and those wrap stitches are gonna be our markers. So we're gonna, uh, the, the next rounds we're gonna, or next row rows, we're gonna look for those stitches, and then we're gonna do something, you know, after these stitches. So these stitches are basically like marks for us. So that's what, that, that's the reason of the setup, um, setup short rows. So the main short row 1A, uh, tells us to knit to the previous wrap stitch, the stitch that we made during the previous wrap and turn that happened right now in the setup short row. And this previous wrap and turn is going to be somewhere nearby. Just a few more stitches. Okay, one, two, three, four. That's right. So we came here to this uh, big guy to this wrap stitch and now we knit this stitch together with the wrap and then we need to knit a few stitches and again these numbers are different for all sizes for me it's three stitches so I'm gonna knit three stitches one two and three and then make another wrap and turn the work I'm going to make another wrap and turn the work. And that was main short row 1A, the main short row that helps us shape the back of the sock. So the main short row 2A, you probably guessed it's going to be the same thing, but uh, with purling on the purl side. So we're going to purl all stitches to the previous wrap and turn, to the previous uh, to the wrapped stitch that we created in the previous um, pro row and this stitch should be somewhere nearby okay just a few stitches away so once we get there we're gonna purl that stitch together with the wrap same thing as we did oh it's right here okay so we get to this thick stitch the big guy and then we uh, purl it together with the wrap, like this. And then we purl a few stitches just one by one. And it is the same number, it's three stitches for me, one, two, three. And then I make another wrap and I turn the work. So this was the main short row 2A. And we're gonna work these two main short rows a few times. Again, the numbers de um, depend on the uh, size you're making. Uh, for me, it's gonna be three times. So I make this pair of short row, uh, main short row 1A and 2A. So I'll call them a pair, right? Because it's a knit plus pearl row. Uh, I made this pair once. So I need to make it two more times, three times altogether. So it's the same thing. We work to the previous uh, wrapped stitch, so it's going to be over here, and then we um, knit a few stitches, again depending on the size you're making, and then we make another wrap, and then we turn the work. Okay, I've got to this um, uh, the previous wrapped stitch, then I uh, knit it together with the wrap, and now I need to knit three stitches and make a wrap and turn. And that's where the funny part comes in uh, because see I have just two stitches left so I need to rearrange the work, uh, rearrange the needles to be able to work on the stitches of the second half of the stitches. So I rearrange them. I remember that I worked two stitches after I made the wrap here, after I knit, knitted the wrap together with the, you know, the wrap stitch together with the wrap. And then I made two stitches and now I make the third stitch because I need three stitches, right? But again, the numbers could be different. So don't just follow me blindly. Look at the pattern for the numbers that belong to your size, to the size you're making. And now I make a wrap and I turn the work and that's why it gets a bit unusual because normally we don't work in the round you know with the pro side of the work to us but this time we have to it will be just for a few stitches so I purl this stitch 
and then I rearranged the work again but I remember that I'm working my second um, main uh, row and that's gonna be the second pair you know and it's a pro row so I rearranged the work and then I continue purling I purl until I get to the uh, uh, the previous wrap stage and that's gonna be somewhere over here yeah it's right here so I'm gonna purl up until I get to that point and here's the big stitch in this row so I purl it together with the wrap and then I purl three more stitches because that's the number for the size I'm making and now I need to make a oh wait a sec something with that stitch okay and now I need to make a wrap and turn but I don't have any more stitches left in this uh, in this half of the stitches right so I need to rearrange the work uh, rearrange the needles for working on the the other half of the stitches just to do one thing so I'm gonna rearrange all these needles to do just one thing to make a wrap and then I could turn the work so I go in there and the stitch that is below right and then make a wrap and then I can turn the work and then I'm gonna rearrange the needles again so it's a bit tedious but it's worth it it's worth it because this part of the shaping um, make sure that uh, among other things you know the other parts are also important but this one make sure that the socks do not slip off the feet so I rearranged the work and now I'm gonna work on the third uh, pair of the main short rows so knit row and pro row and I do the same thing I'm gonna work until I get to this the last wrapped stitch that's gonna be over here and then I'm gonna work three more stitches and then make another wrap. Okay, so I finished this group, working this group of stitches. Now I reshuffle the needles again. And then I work just one stitch over here before I get to my uh, wrap stitch it is right here so I knit this wrap stitch together with the wrap as one stitch and then I make uh, three more knits one two three and then I make another wrap over here and turn my work And now I'm going to work my last because this is my third uh, set of two main rows and now this this row is going to be my last pro row. So I'm going to pro all stitches until I get to the uh, the wrap stitch that I created last time and then I'm going to pro three stitches and then make another wrap and turn the work and that's like I said this is my last um, row. So that is good. <laughs> no more counting. Okay, now I've got to that wrap stitch that is right here. It is the first stitch in this group of stitches. So I pull it together with the wrap and I'm gonna pull three more stitches. One, two, three, and then make another wrap and turn the work. And that's it. These are all short rows for me. So now I'm just uh, knitting all stitches to the end of the round. And see, we're just almost finished half the first half because the beginning of the round is right over here. So we almost finished the first half. So I simply knit all stitches um, of, of this half of the stitches and then knit all stitches of the second half of the stitches and that would be the end of this uh, round that is actually a short row because we haven't started at the beginning of the round right okay this round is done this the last short row in fact and now the shaping is finished the only traces so you can you can tell I'm going to show you the sock from this angle 
and you can tell that this part got higher and that's exactly why we were working on the third part of the shaping to make this part higher so that it kind of hugs the heel uh, the only traces we have from the shaping from all those short rows are these two wrapped stitches and in the next round we're gonna knit all stitches and we're gonna knit the those wrapped stitches together with the wrap so the uh, reason for this round is to get rid of those wrapped stitches so we simply knit all stitches until we come to that the first wrapped stitch it's gonna be right here see and we knit it together with the wrap just as we did when we did the short row shaping so there is one more stitch um, one more wrapped stitch over here and once we knit it together with the wrap we simply knit all stitches to the end of this round just a few more stitches and we are done so this is officially the end of the heel shaping uh, we, uh, we did a great job. It was quite a knitting adventure, wasn't it? And we finished the three parts of the shaping, the first part, the second part, and the third most interesting part that was the um, raising of the back of the foot. And now the heel looks great and it's going to fit nicely as soon as we finish the sock next time. That's all about the heel shaping. Next time we'll add a short cuff to the sock and we'll finish it off with a beautiful stretchy bind off. In fact, I'm going to show you two ways to bind off stitches. A great looking but slightly challenging one, that is the way that is described in the pattern, and a nice looking easy one that provides the same stretch but does not look as perfect. Thank you for watching this video and have a wonderful week. I'll see you in the next tutorial.